come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. I'm sure you know by now that the door you have just entered leads to a strange world. A land of forbidden fancies, peopled by giants and pygmies, kings and cobblers, saints and sinners. Happy children play in its streets while just behind alert iniquitous monsters. Unspeakable crimes are committed here and acts of breathtaking valor. You are the sovereign in this place. It is the realm of your own imagination. Our story this time searches one of its deep recesses, the hidden place of fear. Our mystery drama, Death Pays No Dividend, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Mary Jane Higby and stars Anne Shepard and Guy Sorrell. It is sponsored in part by imported Vigna Rosé wine and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. A famous traveler once said that the most important words in any language are, Where is the exit? Où est la sortie? Donde está la salida? But what of the place where there is no way out? Where every wall is a blank one, marked no exit. This is the circumstance of three men whose work brings them to the tip of a very small island. There was once a stockade here. It was the wall for which the street was named. Wall Street is silent now. The rush of the day has not yet descended. But 30 stories above the narrow street, footsteps echo sharply along a marble corridor. Miss Hannigan! Miss Hannigan, wait! Oh, uh, Mr. Green. Good morning. <laughs> I didn't expect you here this hour in the morning. Mr. Green, I've been so worried. About getting another job? Well, I'm sure we can help you. Our recommendation should be worth something in spite No, no, of... no, not, not about myself. It's Mr. Ellis. Oh? He's horribly depressed. Well, that's only to be expected. You put your whole life into a business, and then through no fault of your own, it suddenly blows up in your face. Uh, no, wait. Uh, please. Don't open the office door yet. I've got to tell you something. Well, couldn't you tell me inside? No, uh, I think Mr. Ellis may be inside there. I do hope so. He's not in his apartment. He worked late last night cleaning out the desk and making the last arrangements. <sighs> Like a funeral. Oh, it's worse than a funeral for Mr. Ellis. He's not like you and Mr. Folger. You both have family, someone to share. Well, it's small comfort to share disgrace with people you love. To drag them down with you. My two boys. I know, I know. I didn't mean to minimize. It's just that, well, frankly, I'm afraid Mr. Ellis is going to do away with himself. Kill himself? Oh, no, he wouldn't do that. He... It made me go home last night. I wanted to stay with him, but he forced me to leave. I tried nearly all night to get him by phone. No answer. Well, let's get in and see what's going on. Oh, good heavens. Papers blowing all over the oh, place. Oh, the draft. The wind. <gasps> Mr. Green, look. Standing on the ledge to the left of the window. Good Lord. Careful, Miss Hannigan. You mustn't startle him. He might jump. You better speak to him, but quietly. Yes, yes. Try to sound calm. Uh, Mr. Ellis, don't do it. Mr. Ellis, please don't. Mr. Ellis, he doesn't seem to hear me. He hears you all right. Try again. Come back in, please. You may hurt somebody else if you... Mr. Ellis. Listen to me. Come back. You mustn't do this. Please. It's no use. I'll try. Victor. Victor, don't don't do it. Listen to me. What I'm going to say is important. There's a better way. Did you hear me? There's a better way. John and I have a plan. You may be doing the right thing, Vic, but you're doing it the wrong way. Victor, get back in here. <gasps> he moved. He's coming in. Yes. When he gets his head to the window, grab his arm. Oh, if only he doesn't fall now. 
damn narrow ledge. Dear Lord, don't let him fall. Don't let him. Oh, there you are, Victor. <laughs> Steady, old man. Come, Mr. Ellis. Let me go. All right, all right. Sit down. Thank God. Can you close the window, Miss Hannigan. <laughs> I looked down. I could have done it if I hadn't looked down. I followed this up like everything else. I can't do anything right. Oh, don't say that. Nothing that happened was your fault. You were all victims of a rotten crook. I didn't have the guts to jump. Just didn't have the guts. Thank heaven you didn't. You must never try a thing like that again. Never. All right. It's a sin. It's all right now, Miss Hannigan. Yes. Yes, it's, it's all right now. I'd never forgive myself. No, 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 no. Calm down. Good morning. <laughs> What's going on? What's with Miss Hannigan? She's had a bad shock. What happened? Uh, later, John. Please, Miss Hannigan. Yes, yes, yes. It's helpless. I never forgive myself. Look, come on. Now. Snap out of it. Miss Hannigan. <laughs> She's been under a terrible strain. I'm sorry. My nerves. Yes, oh. yes, of course, of course. Uh, Victor, get us some water, will you? Oh, I'm sure. I- I'll be a moment. Uh... I, I, I've got to talk to you alone, John. Okay. Come in my office. Are you sure you're all right now, Miss Hannigan? I'm sorry I let go like that. It won't happen oh, again. All right. Relax. Try to go on as though nothing had happened. Here's the water. I I didn't mean to put you through this. You of all people. Come on, John. I think we should let Miss Hannigan go home. Uh, no, that won't be necessary, Mr. Folger. I'm all right. Kent. Yes? What did you mean? There's a better way. Uh, we'll uh, talk about it later. Now, what was going on? Victor tried to jump out of the window. What? He was standing on the ledge when we got here this morning. Oh, for Pete's sake. That, that idiot. How long was he out there? Did he draw a crowd? No. Well... I suppose somebody must have seen him, though. That fool. Well, this settles it, John. We, we've got to let him in on the scheme. No. Vic's too unstable. He's sure to blow it. It's the only way to keep him from blowing it. It's obvious. If word gets around that a member of the firm tried to commit suicide and then something happened to us, they'd never stop the investigation. Uh, not until our families were starving. Damn it all. That's not going to happen. I'm going to meet my obligation to Marie. We both have obligations, John. I'm not going to leave my wife helpless. I'm going to provide for her if it's the last thing I do. It will be. Look, you don't understand, Victor. His father founded this firm, and it's been Victor's whole life, a sort of memorial to his father. Well, now this scandal... Well, the mood he's in, he's apt to do anything. The only way to protect the scheme is to let him in on it. Oh, you're probably right. But all my instincts are against it. Well, shall I get him in here? <sighs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. I'll get him. But if he louses this up... Uh, Vic? Yes? Uh, come in here a minute, will you? Yes? Uh, what is it? Close the door. You made a jackass of yourself, didn't Cool you? it, John. Now, if you've got some cockeyed scheme to keep the scandal from breaking, you know, don't waste my time. We'll be lucky if we get less than 20 years. Oh, come on. Stop the emotional jag and talk sense. Kent and I are in a worse spot than you are. We both have families to provide for, right? And there is just one way to do it. Our life insurance. You, you can't collect on suicide. We know that. But you can collect... On murder. What? I don't get it. A good, clean bullet in the back of the head when you're least expecting it. It's an easy way to go, Vic. You'd never know what hit you. How do you think you're going to bring that off? Never mind. I can bring it off. Years ago, I did a favor for somebody. I didn't know him too well, but I used to drop into his place once in a while for... Well, never mind what for. 
Later, he got mixed up with some pretty notorious characters, so I figured he'd be in a position to arrange what they call a, a, a contract. What kind of contract? Oh, for Pete's sake, I know you've devoted your whole life to the firm, but don't you ever go to the movies? You must know there's such a thing as a hired killer. Oh. That kind of contract? Yes, yes, that kind. So, we have two contracts right now. Now, do you want to make a third? You mean pay somebody to kill me? Yeah, three thousand dollars. Well, well, now I I don't well, know. It makes if... a great deal more sense than what you just tried to do. No pain, no mess. These guys are professionals. Uh, it's a tough idea to get used to. Uh, how do I go about it? One quick phone call and three thousand dollars in cash. Well, maybe you ought to take a few hours to think it over. Well, I I tried. Three times to kill myself. I haven't the nerve. Okay. Go ahead. Make your phone call. You're sure? Yes. Because once I complete this call, there'll be no turning back. You understand that, Victor? you got to be sure you want to go through it. Hello? Uh, uh, is uh, Louie there? Right, I'll hold on. You sure you want me to go ahead? Yes. Uh, Louis, uh, this is John Folger. Yes, yes, I know. I promise not to call you again. No, no, no. We're going through with it. We um, want to add another name to the shareholders. Three thousand, right? Where? All three of us? No. Oh. All right. We'll do. We're to put the money in a book in the 42nd Street Library. Put the book back on the shelf at exactly 5 p.m., walk out, and stand for a few minutes chatting near the lions on the library steps. And then, split. Oh, they're kidding. Oh, no. We're in earnest. Deadly earnest. Why hang around on the steps? <laughs> I should imagine somebody wants to get a good look at us. The killer? Yes. It would be a shame to rub out the wrong guys. A suicide pact. But quite unlike your ordinary run-of-the-mill agreement, the participants have relinquished any option of withdrawing. From now on, each one knows that his next move may well be his last. We'll see how they stand up under that unpleasant knowledge when we return with Act Two. Rather than face a financial scandal, the officers of a small but highly respected Wall Street firm have decided to commit suicide. Through a go-between, they have arranged for a paid executioner to do the job for them. An easy way out We'll never know what hit us, they tell each other. But have they considered their remaining days and hours when even the most chance encounter will chill the blood and the question rise, is this the face of my killer? To see how they are facing up under the strain, let's listen to a telephone conversation. Hello. Kent, this is John. You heard what happened? No. The goofed off. Ran away. Remember, we were giving May Hannigan a vacation, a cruise to the Caribbean? Well, at the last minute, he decides to go with her. Well, I... Well, I guess he wants to do some of the things he never took time for before. Oh, come off it. He's running away. He knows they won't dare shoot him aboard ship. They couldn't make a getaway. He's as safe on that boat as he would be in jail. Well, what of it? They'll hit him when he gets off. Well, I was hoping they'd tend to think first before they got you or me. Did you tell Louie that? I couldn't tell him anything. He made me promise never to contact him again. Louie's not part of the mob or, or family or whatever they call it nowadays. They just use his place of business sometimes, meet there. What kind of business is he in? Look, I swore to keep him out of it. Now, what you don't know can't hurt Louie. <sighs> okay. Well, I'd, I wouldn't worry too much about Vic. Well, damn it all, I do worry. He hasn't got our motivation. Once you and I are out of the way, what's to keep him from getting the wind up and 
running to the police with the whole story. I don't think he can do that. There's such a thing as accessory before the fact, you know. This may look like a suicide pact to us, but to the police it's going to be murder. Oh. You mean he'd face a murder rap, huh? Well, he might. I just hope he knows that. <laughs> startles me every time I hear it. We should be used to it by now. They blow it every day at noon. I've been looking all over the ship for you. I was taking a turn around the deck. You are shaking. Uh, no, no, I'm all right. Look, I'm not absolutely sure, but I think I have something wonderful to tell you. Did you hear the news broadcast this morning? No, indeed. I'm not wasting my last few days listening to... No, I didn't. Well, you know those penny gold stocks you bought a few years ago, you and Mr. Green? Penny gold? Oh, yes, the uh, stock we bought from Harrison to help them out of a tight spot. Mm -hmm. It's worthless. Well, that company, I think it's the same company, has just made the greatest gold strike since 1849. What? Mm Mm-hmm. Harrison's company? I went straight to the radio room as soon as I heard it. The broadcasts were taped, you know, and they were kind enough to run it again for me. I have the notes I took here in my purse. Oh, dear, it's awfully windy, isn't it? We'll go inside. Um, the, um, President Taft Mining Corporation? That's the one, isn't it? I believe so. Uh, yes. Here. Let me get the door. Whew. Oh, that's right. Ah, better. Relief to get out of that wind. Now, here's what I took down. The um, Preston Pass Mining Corporation has uncovered what seems to be the lost Fortuna vein. Does that make sense to you? Yes. The Fortuna, yes, it does. Harrison mentioned the Fortuna vein. But this ledge of almost pure gold said to exist in Mono County, California... Mono County, that's right. ...has um, been sought by miners for over a hundred years. Fortuna Vane, it must be Harrison's company. Well, this changes everything, doesn't it? Oh, it, it sure does. You can pay off the debts of that crook and his disgraceful charisma funding company. Well, if this report is accurate, we can. You have a lot of taft stock, and with the price of gold now. Who'd ever have thought? Why, why that part of California has been picked over so much, it, it seems impossible there'd be an ounce of gold left in the ground. We only bought it to help Harrison out. Oh, I'm so happy for you. You deserve it. Oh, Miss Hannigan, you're... You're a jeweler. Oh, Mr. Ellis, my hair. Don't mind my kissing you. No, no, I'm so happy. What a day. Come on, down to the bar. We'll crack a bottle of champagne. Kent. I'm so glad you decided to telephone me here aboard ship instead of waiting till I got back. I've been trying to get you all afternoon. There was no answer at the office. No, the, the office is closed. Well, where are you, home? No, I, I'm calling from outside, a payphone. Well, great news, eh? It is Harrison's company, isn't it? What? The Taft Mining Corporation. Oh, yes. Yes, Harrison's stock has gone way up, out of sight. Well, that just about gets us off the hook, doesn't it? Yes. Financially, it looks like things can be worked out. Oh, great. Who'd ever have thought it? You got in touch with the bank and called Morgan and Benson, didn't you? Ken? Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, I'm here. Ken? John got in touch with that man, Louie, didn't he? Called it off? Ken? Vic, that's why I phoned. Is John all right? No. You mean, he didn't get to Louis? He never had the chance. Oh, when? Where? In front of his house. Just one shot, Vic, from a passing car. Just one shot. Mr. Ellis, what on earth? Not the greatest disguise in the world, but the best I could do. I bought the hippie clothes from a kid down in Tourist, and I had the ship's beauty parlor dye my hair. Goodbye, Miss Hannigan. Wait! You 
seriously believe there's a gunman waiting for you when we die? Well, that's the hell of it. I don't know where he is. Here, at the office, my apartment. Well, don't rush off like this. You're not thinking clearly. There's only one sensible thing to do. Go to the police. The police? Tell them the whole story and ask for protection. I can't do that. It's the only way. But I can't do that to John. Mr. Folger is dead, Mr. Ellis. His widow's alive and she's an invalid. If I go to the police, they'll cancel the insurance you'll get. The firm can take care of Mrs. Folger. We'll be lucky if we can pay our debts and save the firm. No, I got into this mess and I've got to see it through. I'm going to make a break and run for it. I'll be the first one off the ship oh, and run no. for a taxi. no. Please, listen to me. Don't rush down the gangplank alone. Let some of the other passengers start first. Then saunter off casually. Oh, dear. Take my arm. I'm coming with you. No. Absolutely not. I'm a living target. Stay out of range, Miss Hannigan. Your life depends on it. Goodbye. Where do you plan to go? Some hotel, I guess. So I can figure a way to get out of town safely. Here. Look, take my keys. Go to my apartment. No, no, I'm I'm not going to drag you into this. It's the safest place for you. Nobody will dream of looking for you there. And I can reach you by phone. I'll go straight to the office. That way, you'll know what's going on. Well, all right. But only for a few hours. We've got to talk to this Louis person. I hope Kent's still alive. If not... You have the power of attorney. I executed it for you in Puerto Rico. Take complete charge until you hear from one of us again. If you ever do. Goodbye, Miss Hannigan. Hello? Oh, good. You made it to the apartment all right. Yes. I don't know. I guess so. I have an uneasy feeling that I'm being watched as I sit here. You're all alone? Yes. It's Saturday, you know. I'm just getting jittery, I guess. It's hard to keep my imagination from running riot. There is one strange thing, though. What's that? One of the walls in your office is half-painted. You didn't authorize the paint job, did you? Of course not. We're dissolving the firm. No, he says not. His, his painter didn't do it. Oh, uh, by the way, I think I know who that man Louis is. Oh. The one who set up the deal. Well, how'd you find that out? The filing cabinet in Mr. Folger's office. There's a promissory note made to Mr. Folger by a Louis Vongoli. He owns a small bar on the east side. That makes sense. John said he used to drop in at Louis's place. The bar, eh? Mm-hmm. I'm going to drop in on Louis myself and put an end to this awful business. But if I fail, we better get you out of town in a hurry. You can go to my grandfather's house in the country. Now, I'm not going to drag you any further into this. And I certainly don't want to bring your it's grandfather into... my house now. I inherited it. You've got to go, Mr. Ellis, because I called Kent Green's home. Yes? He's been missing since the day John Folger died. Uh, what'll it be, miss? Some nice fresh oysters. Just come in this morning. Uh, I'd like to see the owner, please. I want to talk to Louis. Are you talking to him? Well, um, it's a confidential matter. Uh, this is the lunch hour, lady. I'm busy. Come back, say, uh, 3.30, 4 o'clock. No. I've got to talk to you now. It's about John Folger. Never heard him. Uh, here's something to refresh your memory. This is your signature, isn't it? What? Your signature on this promissory note. You know who Mr. Folger was, and you know what happened to him. Hey. Joe, take over, will you? Come on, lady. Over to this table in the corner. Now sit down. What's this all about? This is your signature, isn't it? I ain't sure. Oh, come on. 
Louis, you borrowed $12,000 from Mr. Folger on July 8th, 1948. What are you? A cop? I'm Mr. Folger's secretary. And Mr. Green. And Mr. Ellis. We want to call the... Uh, deal off. I don't know nothing about no deal. You arrange the contract and you're the only one who can cancel it. You got the wrong guy. Oh, please, you must help me. We have no way of reaching this man from Chicago. Please, tell me. I gotta him. get back to my counter. At least tell me who he is. You'll have to leave now. I need this table. We've got to stop him. Now, for the last You're time... You're going I... to let another man die? A man who doesn't want to die because of a mistake? Like I said, this is all Greek to me. But, uh... I did hear... There's talk around that Foggy Bynes is in town. Who? You heard me. Where can I find him? I wouldn't know. Well, uh, uh, tell me what he looks like. Never seen Foggy in my life. Foggy? Is he a Frenchman? Ah, uh, they call him that because he ain't got hardly no voice. Oh. That's all I know. No voice? Yeah, he got a knife in his throat when he was a kid. Can't hardly make no sound at all. A killer with hardly any voice. That's not much to go on, is it? May Hannigan's confidence is at a low ebb as she walks out of Louis Van Gulley's bar onto the teeming streets of Manhattan. How long, she wonders, can she keep the last remaining partner of Ellis Green and Folger alive? We'll find the answer to that question when we return shortly with Act Three. May Hannigan found herself peering nervously into every darkened doorway as she approached the garage which housed her automobile. This was a job for a private detective, she thought, not a skilled typist. Her hands were icy as she drove up to the apartment building where Victor Ellis was waiting. And it was with relief that she turned the wheel over to him. In minutes, they had crossed the Triborough Bridge and sped up Buckner Boulevard. Now they are on the Connecticut Turnpike. Mr. Ellis, I wish you'd let me take this whole business to the police. For the last time, no, May, no. But you're making yourself accessory to murder. Well, if you look at it that way, I am accessory to a murder. There's nothing to be done about it. What else did this man Louis say? Nothing, except that Froggy has no voice. Well, maybe Louis will tell the uh, mob to call it off. No, he won't contact anybody. Now that there's been one killing, he's terrified of being involved. He's frozen with fear. Poor guy. Poor guy. What he did, what you all did was a sin. Don't you worry about that? I've got other things on my mind. That car behind us, for instance. A car? Now, a big one. Black, I think. It's been with us ever since we left Buckner Boulevard. Are you sure it's the same one? Slow down a bit. You give him a chance to pass you. Okay. He's dropping back. No, he's not going to pass. No, but that truck is. Probably all imagination. Perfectly innocent chap, no doubt, on his way home to his wife and kids. Yes, but we can't assume that. There's an exit near here. Get off the turnpike. If he follows us, we'll know. We'll know we're in trouble. Still there? No. Yes. There he is. Uh, he's after us, all right. Okay, Buster, if it's a race you want. Oh, Mr. Ellis, not so fast. You have to turn left at the next light. Stop! Mr. Ellis, red light! Look out! Ah! Made it. Oh, you nearly killed us both. I lost him. Yes. He stopped for the light. Doesn't prove a thing. Except that he's not taking any chances on a brush with the law. Now, if you were past the veteran's hospital and the cemetery... You're going to lose him for good. Oh, look out, the van! Sorry. I was afraid you didn't see us. You get back on the turnpike, you turn up that hill. Is he in sight? No. Slow down. You're coming to a crossroads. There's a turnpike entrance over there. Good. 
Now I'm going to open her up. Pray we don't get stopped for a ticket. A ticket? That would be just fine with me. A station house sounds like a nice safe place to spend the night. What are you doing now? Eighty-five. Oh, heaven help us. I didn't know this car had it in her. Oh, no. Is it him? Oh, good Lord, he must be doing a hundred. Well, that settles it. You're going to get out. No. Don't argue. Your life's in danger. You got John from a moving car with one shot. Don't stop now. I've got to get you out of this car. It's a death trap. Not here. It's the next gas station. Lots of people. There are bright lights. That's the best place. All right. Remember how to get to the house? Yes. Right through Hamilton Village. Up River Road. Right. To a sign that says the Laurel. Right. And the house at the top of the hill. But don't get off the turnpike unless you know you've lost it. Don't let him overtake you on a dark road. Here's the gas station. Oh, Mr. Ellis, I beg you. Stop here and call the police. I'll get out. Oh, dear. You'll go to the house, then. I'll try. Heaven knows I'll try. I'll phone there every half hour till you answer. Oh, dear heaven. What can I do? What can I do? Operator, this is an emergency. Get me the Hamilton police. Hamilton. H A M I. That's right. Hello? Is this the police station in Hamilton? I want to report a stolen car. My name? Hannigan. I own the house on Laurel Hill. Oh! Well, hello, Sergeant Kelly. Yes, this is May Hannigan. Look, this weird-looking man, he's middle-aged, dyed hair, wearing tie-dyed pants, striped sneakers, and a sweatshirt with a pair of uh, big red lips on the back. A, a real weirdo. Yes. And uh, I think he's on drugs or something. He stole my car. Yes, that's correct. And, and um, he's got my house keys as well. He's on his way up there now. Uh, yes? And will you send a police car to head him off? Yes. I'll, I'll be in tomorrow and press charges. Thank you. Well, oh, that'll put him where he'll be safe for the night. <laughs> I was doing 90 most of the time. Ah, and you never saw a cop? Not a sign of one. It's funny. It's darn cold in this house. Ah, uh, yes, I, I had the furnace turned off when I left on the cruise. You still at the gas station? No, a uh, hamburger place down the road. Look, do you have any blankets here? Yes, uh, upstairs, but I don't think you're going to need them. I thought I heard something. Oh. Well, um, it's, a, it's an old house full of creaks and groans. No, not like that. I turned off the lamp. And look out the window. Isn't there a police car there? Why should there be a police car? Wait, you're sure there's no police Positive. car? Positive. I'm going back out to the garage. No, 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 no. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't leave the house. The moon is like daylight. I hear him. In the house with me. Well, don't go out. Stay inside. Oh, if I only had a gun. Uh, the grandfather's gun is there. Where? Um, in the desk. Where the phone is. Bottom drawer. But it's in a strong box with a combination lock. Victor, you're sure it's not the police? Well, of course I am. Uh, uh put on the lamp again. I'll give you the combination of the lock. I'm going to make a dash for the stairs. No, no, no. I'm afraid to 
light it. Do you hear anything now? No. Uh-huh. Uh, keep your hand on the light switch. Turn it off if you see him and um, drop to the floor. Go ahead. You see the lock? Yeah. 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 Uh, keep calm. Don't make mistakes. Six. Left. Six. Two. Right. Two? My hands are sweating. A nine. Right. Got it. Got it. That's it? Yes. Yes, it's open. My constitutional rights, and I don't think you can lock me up in that cell. Well, I don't happen to have identification on me, but I can assure you that I am Victor Fairchild Ellis Jr. of Ellis Folger and Green, a brokerage firm. Sure you are. That outfit's the latest thing on Wall Street. All the brokers run around in red, white, and blue sneakers. Come on, in you go. I can explain. You can explain all you like in the morning. Now in, both of you. <laughs> Who wants this? I'm, I'm an innocent bystander. I got nothing to do with this guy. You got nothing on me. I had a concealed weapon. Get moving. Or are we going to have to give you a little help? You're not locking me up with this nut, are That's you? the idea. Now simmer down and get some sleep. You're going to need your wits about you in the morning. <sighs> you ever notice this? Well, Froggy Burns. You're just the man I want to talk to. And this is a good place to do it. Come to think of it, it's a great place. The best I could ever find. I'm sorry I had you arrested, but I didn't know what else to do. Well, thank the Lord you did. I've never been so jittery in my life. As soon as I got my shaky hands on that gun, it went off. But I heard two shots. Oh, uh, well, that was Sergeant Kelly. He shot the lock off the front door and rushed in. And where was Froggy through all this? Still in the glassed-in sun porch, trying to pick the lock. When he heard the commotion, he ran out, and the other cop in the prowl car nabbed him. Uh, do you have the office keys, May? Yes, uh, but there's, there's somebody in the office. I heard a scraping noise. We've nothing to fear now. Here, I'll open it. It's the painter. Say, we didn't order a decorating job. What are you... I can't. Mr. Green. Oh, am I glad to see you. Well, it's great to see you, Kent. So you're okay. I've been wondering about you. Oh, we were afraid you... Oh, Mr. Green. Oh, I'm so happy you're all right. What's all this with the paint and dirty overalls? Well, the day John was shot, I sent the office staff home early. You can imagine I was pretty nervous. I noticed there were painters working in the outside hall. So I talked one of them into selling me his overalls and some paint and brushes. And in case anybody should be watching me from another building, I started painting the back wall here. Nobody pays any attention to painters. As soon as five o'clock came, I walked right out with the rest of the paint crew. Of course, I didn't dare go home, so... Well, I got an old station wagon and put a sign in the window, Meteor Decorating Company. I've been moving around more or less freely ever since. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of what I went through. Uh, and you were simply roaming around town with paint on your face. Well, well, you're both safe now. Yes, Kent. The contract for killing us has been canceled. Oh, thank the Lord. Now I can get washed up. Suppose we celebrate with a cup of coffee. I can make some in Mr. Folger's office. Your office now, May. Yes. That is, uh... <laughs> yes. A little office? A great woman, Kent. She saved my life. I, um... I asked her to marry me. Well, congratulations. No, uh... She refused. Said what she really wanted was a partnership in the firm. Partnership? Well, that's a swift rise. What could I do? I gave it to her. <laughs> Strange having a woman in John's office. I know. Frankly, it bothers me. My father was very conservative, you know, especially about the firm. Ellis, Green, and Hannigan. That's not a bad letterhead. No, but if my father knew what Hannigan stood for, well, he'd turn in his grave. Well, um, let's look at it this way. If it weren't for Hannigan, 
you'd be turning in yours. So May Hannigan accomplished two very difficult things that night. She saved her employer from certain death, and she raised herself into the gilded executive ranks. And that, as any secretary will tell you, is the hardest thing in the world to do. But as May herself often says, there must be an easier way. I'll be back shortly. You're driving your car you knew you were going to buy the minute you saw it. Skyhawk. Buick Skyhawk. You just knew a car this streamlined would be easy on gas, and you were right. In published EPA mileage test results, Skyhawk got 25 miles per gallon on the open road and 16 in the city. Skyhawk. It's rakish, it's low slung, it looks European, but it's a Buick. Living free. Hi, I'm Burl Ives. You know, nothing perks up a meal like an exciting sight dish. And I'd like to tell you about one your family and your guests are sure to love and keep on loving. It's Uncle Ben's long grain and wild rice. It's a mouth-watering mixture of Uncle Ben's converted bran rice, wild rice herbs, and seasonings. It's the kind of side dish that can make an ordinary meal a great meal and can keep a great meal from becoming ordinary. In fact, Uncle Ben's long grain and wild rice is so good, they tell me that most everyone who tries it comes back for more. That's because there are no compromises in quality. But that's the way Uncle Ben's does business. So, to make an ordinary meal a great meal, try Uncle Ben's long grain and wild rice. And to make sure you get the quality ingredients and good taste I've told you about, make sure it's Uncle Ben's. This Friday and Saturday during Macy's exciting two-day home sale, you'll find big savings on furniture, TVs, stereos, appliances, mattresses, and much, much more. In Macy's floor covering department, you'll save 3 to $5 a square yard on a selection of Dacron polyester broadloom. Choose from a dense velvet, a thick plush, or a heavy texture in an array of solids and tweeds. Regularly $12.99 to $14.99, now just $9.99 a square yard installed over sponge rubber padding. You'll also find 20% reductions on every custom length drapery at Macy's. Choice of styles, sizes, and colors. Fabrics in traditional, contemporary, and early American. Designs cut to the exact inch length in standard widths. Bring your window measurements, all delivered in just three weeks. There is also a huge assortment of machine washable Dacron polyester neon curtains on sale at substantial savings. Just a few of the great buys Friday and Saturday at Macy's exciting two-day home sale. Broadloom at all Macy's stores except Flatbush. If there's a moral to our story tonight, it's this. Suicide is not even a loser's game. It's no game at all. Because death is one commodity that nobody can cheat you out of. When your option comes due, you'll cash in. In the meantime, life has a lot of surprises in store. Don't ever sell it short. Our cast included Ann Shepard, Guy Sorrell, Court Benson, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Contact, the 12-hour cold capsule, and Uncle Ben's Long Grain and Wild Rice. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Mystery Theater was also brought to you in part by ShopRite Supermarkets, where you get a lot more for a little less.